Hey there, everyone. Um, my name is Bailey, and uh, I'm a I'm a graduate student at the University of Virginia, and I decided to um, I'm a bridge I'm a member of the Bridge Club there, and I decided to try to make a video um, to let just to show everyone at the Bridge Club um, my thought process for bidding some of these hands. Uh, I'm not sure how interesting this is going to be. Uh, if this really gets going, I can uh, do a few more, but um, I just uh, I just want to try one out and see how it goes. See how interesting uh, people think it is. Um, for those of you on YouTube who aren't at the University of Virginia, uh, I'm a, I'm a, I, I guess if I actually joined like um, a, br a bridge club at uh, somewhere outside of the university, I'd be like a, a maybe a beginner to intermediate level player. Um, and but for like a like uh, if I were to actually be compared to everyone in the world, maybe someone like an inter intermediate level bridge player, I'd say. Uh, but uh, I'm basically just making this to, uh, to try to get people at the bridge club uh, the thoughts, uh, so give them some thoughts on how I think about bidding um, during hands. So uh, as I said, um, I'm going to try to make this video, especially since uh, I have time constraints on making videos. Uh, I, I want to just uh, talk about bidding more than declaring or uh, defending because I think the decla declaring and defending, uh, you can kind of learn a lot of both of those intuitively. Whereas bidding, it's uh, if you don't really understand the structure, it's a lot more difficult. So uh, I'm just going to go through bid some hands and uh, give some thought processes on what I'm thinking when I bid these hands, and uh, we'll see how this goes. So. So let's start here. Uh, we have uh, uh, this. This program is Bridge Baron, by the way. Um, and for for those of you who are avid bridge fans, I'm sure you've heard of Bridge Baron. So let's begin with this hand. Uh, we have <coughs> first of all, we want to count the number of high card points. So we have two aces, a king, and two queens. So it's eight, eleven, fifteen points. So we have fifteen high card points. And uh, I'm sure you know that we need at least 13 points to open, so we can open this hand. So, what do we open? Well, first, we need to make sure we know what kind of hand we have in terms of a balanced hand or an unbalanced hand. Um, so, let's take a look at this hand. Uh, there are two ways to remember whether or not your hand, uh, what kind of hands are balanced. First way is just to remember what kind of shape they are, and second way is to uh, remember a rule. Uh, the first if you want to try to remember what shape they are, uh, there are only three types of uh, balanced hands. The shapes are 4 3 3 3, 4 4 3 2, and 5 3 3 2. So that, again, that's 4 3 3 3. That's the most obvious one. Uh, 4 4 3 2, and 5 3 3 2. Those are the only three types of hand that are considered balanced. The rule that you can use to check is if you have at most one doubleton and no singleton or voids. That's again, no double t or sorry, uh, at most one doubleton and no singleton or voids. So you look at this hand and we have a singleton. So clearly this hand is not balanced. So we have 15 high card points and remember, if we have 15 high card points and we have a balanced hand, we want to open one no trump. But that's not the case for this hand since we have a singleton. And again, this shape is five four three one, which is not one of the three shapes that I mentioned. So we want to open um, a five card major if we have one, or rather our longest suit. And if if it's at least five cards long, and since we do have a suit that's five cards long, we want to bid it, and that's hearts. So, uh, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> so I actually I'm oh, wow. Okay, so I'm actually responding. My partner actually opened one club here, and now everything changes. Um, and, and I mean, even if I knew that I was third seat um, when I was going to bid anyway, I should be thinking about this stuff. Because I have 15 high card points, it's very likely that I'm going to be the one opening anyway. So if it, was, if it was two passes to me, I would still open one heart here. But instead, my partner has opened one club. Now I have a huge hand. First and foremost, you want when your partner opens, you want to try to figure out what kind of range uh, you're in. And as I said, I have 15 high card points. He had at least 13. You add the two together, you have at least 28 already. So we definitely want to be in games so somewhere. We had, we really should be in games somewhere, no matter what. Which means, no matter what bids I make, I really need to make sure that my partner does not pass me under three no trump. So when I'm responding now, here's the thing: 
just because I have 15 points does not mean I want to jump and show my strength because if I'm strong I actually want to get more information excuse me get more information about how our hands look together um, at low levels so we want to conserve as much space as possible um, but first and foremost if you have at least six points you should always respond I'm sure everyone knows that by now um, and usually you should respond with your longest suit and in this case our longest suit is hearts so even if I had like six points in the same shape five four three one I would still be bidding one heart but notice that one heart is not passable since it's a new suit by responder so it's okay to bid one heart you don't have to jump to two hearts or three hearts just because you get excited and whatnot um, because one heart is still forcing uh, what is this color scheme improvement for us I don't know alright <laughs> sorry about that so let's open one heart or respond one heart now he bids one spade so now what do I do um, well this is actually pretty difficult because if I bid two diamonds um, clearly I, d I don't want to rebid hearts here um, because if I rebid two hearts I'd be showing if, if I rebid hearts I'd probably be showing at least six in general if I rebid two hearts I only show five but that's a very weak bid it should be like six to ten points so um, so when you response once but remember I don't want to pass anything under three no trump right now I'm thinking that I'll probably end up somewhere around three no trump um, unfortunately Bridge Baron does some weird things and um, I'm not sure exactly which conventions are being played here but um, I I if I had a choice I would use force to forcing but I don't want to get into that that's a little difficult so let's just bid three diamonds for now and he ends up with three no trump okay <coughs> and the reason why I bet three diamonds here is because instead of two diamonds, I did say the one heart I was trying to conserve space, but the two diamonds some people play as um, relatively weak as well. It's probably like at least 11 points. The two diamonds is probably a decent bit here. Problem is, my entire life I've been playing 4 2 14, and that's actually one of the. Uh, it's actually a relatively difficult um, convention to understand. I don't want to put too much into people's heads. So, um. So if you want to play two diamonds as like kind of an intermediate um, two suitor hearts and diamonds, you can bid three diamonds to show that you really want to get the game. In this case, he wants to bid three no trump, and so we're probably in a bid three no trump. If you really, I mean, if you want to think about slam, we have 15 points. He still needs like remember slam, you need at least 33 points. He still needs like what um, 18 points? There, there's no way he has that. I mean, I can add a single 10 or length or whatnot, but he still needs like 16, 17 points at least. Not likely. I just passed Reno Trump. And let's see how it looked. Let's give me Reno Trump. So our, so our fit is clubs. And um, I've told people with uh, I bridge club that just because you have a minor suit fit doesn't mean you want to be going bidding that minor suit because Reno Trump is a better place to play than five a minor in general, if you can play there. And we clearly can play Reno Trump we have stoppers all these suits so if you take like five club tricks three heart tricks we have entries here right yeah so it's five three that's eight so we have at least ten maybe a diamond for eleven but did you see that we don't really have slam potential because we don't have the two aces so three no trump is a perfect contract this hand all right that was good let's move on to the next hand Okay. So, okay. So I'm second seed. I just uh, saw a pass from East. So what kind of hand we have here? We have an Ace and Ace, a King, a Queen, and two Jacks. How many high card points is that? It's eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. That's oh, we have fifteen points again. <laughs> That's pretty nice. Uh, we have fifteen high card points. So now what do we do? Well, again, as I said, we want to check if we have a balanced hand, right? So first way we check if we have a balanced hand is just to list out the types of balanced hands. Which are four three 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 four four three two and five three three two, and notice that the last one that I stated was five three three two, which is exactly what I have. I have five clubs, three diamonds, three hearts, and two spades. And if you want to use the other rule, um, no more than one double ten, and exactly, or, or and uh, no single tens or voids. We clearly have no single tens or voids, and we have only one double ten. So this is a balanced hand. And how many points did I say I have? I have fifteen points, right? Yeah, fifteen points. So remember, one no trump, fifteen seventeen high card points. And uh, we got interference, unfortunately. <laughs> Whoa. 
Okay.